I thought I asked for some extra brown paper. I'm going to do a proof now. That's the last of the paper. And this, this, is what, this is what you're going to give me. I hope it's a short proof. So this is the idea. We're, um, we're going to look at what you have left over when you divide by something. So if you took something like um, 23 divided by 7, uh, what do you have? Well that's, well, that's equal to 3. And do you remember before you learn fractions, you say, oh, that's 3 with 2 left over because 21 is 3 times 7, and then there's 2 left over. Remainder. Remainder, that's called remainder. So that's remainder of 2. This is the fact we need. If you have a remainder of a times b, it's actually equal to the remainder of a uh, times the remainder of b. You can multiply remainders together. So if you've got a big number, you can actually split it up into its factors and just look at the remainders of its factors and then you multiply the remainders together. It, it works out nicely that way. Uh, I'll, I'll try and give you a better idea of what I mean. So if I had the remainder of 24, uh, this is what you get when you divide by 7. Let's do the same idea. Uh, then I could use that as a remainder of, well, it's 8 times 3, isn't it? So I could have the remainder of 8 when you divide by 7, multiply the remainder of 3 when you divide by 7. So we want to know how much is left over when you divide by 7. Uh, what are the ans answer we're expecting? Uh, 24 divided by 7, how much do you have left over? 3. 3, right, we're expecting 3. So 24 is 8 times 3, so we can actually split it up. We can look for, at the remainder of 8 and we can look at the remainder of 3. When you divide by 7. When you divide by 7. You see what's left over. What's left over? with 8 divided by 7. 1. You just have 1 left over. What do you have left over when it's 3 divided by 7? It's actually 3 itself. You can say 0, lots of 7, and then 3 left over. So it's 1 times 3, which is equal to 3, which is the correct answer. So you can split it up in this way. So you can break it down. Let's do more about division by 7. You actually turn it into a big multiplication table. Do you remember multiplication tables at school? So let's have a look. So things you have left over when you divide by 7. You could have 1 left over, 2 left over, 3 left over, 4, 5 or 6. Uh, you could have 0 left over, which means it's 7, 14, 21. Uh, I'm going to ignore that for a second. And I'll do the same down here. 4, 5 and 6. Right. So that's what you could have left over. And I'm just going to do a multiplication table. Uh, so uh, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. So that's easy. 5 and 6. Let's do the 2 times table. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times uh, 4 is 8. So you've got 8. But then you can wrap back. You can say that's a 1. Okay. So that's 1 left over when you've got 8. 2 times 5 is 10. Uh, so that's 3 left over. Because I'm using 7 here as my number. And so that would be a 5 here. Let's do the multiplication, all of it. 6 times 2 is 12, has 5 left over. Uh, 6 times 3 is uh, 18, which has 4 left over. It's actually 3, 2 and 1. 6 times 6 is 36. And 35 is a multiple of 7, so it has 1 left over. That does work. So we've got our multiplication table here. It's like a Latin square. Do you know Latin squares? It's when you fill in a square, so all, every row and every column has a different entry. Uh, yeah, they have Latin squares because the Romans used to do them. So you can fill them in with letters or numbers. But every row uses the numbers from 1 to 6 once without repetition, and every column uses it. It's kind of okay, like a Sudoku. I guess that would be the modern version of that. Uh, so every row and every column is filled with 1 to 6 there. Which means, and importantly, every row uh, has the number 1 in it as well. That's what we're going to be using. So this is what you do. We're interested in p minus 1 factorial, uh, which is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times da -da 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 -da, times, and what you're going to have at the end, p minus 2 and p minus 1, that's the end. What you do is you compare these up. So you can pair things together like this, 2 times 4 is equal to 1. So if I have, if I put in my 4, if I pair this together, 2 times 4 is going to be 1. That's what you're going to get left over. And I can keep doing that. So 1 by itself is fine. Uh, you know, 3 times, what is it? 3 times 5. So 3 times 5 is 1. 
So you can pair these up and you get one times one times one times one. The only thing you don't get, the only thing you can't pair, is the last thing, p minus one. In this example, it was six, because it's right there in the corner. Six times six is one, so it doesn't have a pair. Everything else gets paired up. So it becomes one times one times one times one times one, with the p minus one at the end. So how much is left over? p minus one. I was interested in this though, p minus one factorial plus one. How much is left over? Uh, you have remainder p, the prime. You have p left over. Or if you want to say it in another way, it's a multiple of the prime. That's what you get if you have seven left over. It's seven, 14, 21, and all the rest. Or you could say it has zero left over. Uh, therefore, you have zero left over, you can divide by the prime. And just to show you the, just to really get that idea across, I hope, is to show you when it doesn't work. So we'll take a composite number and you'll, say, you'll see it won't work. So we'll take six, right? So two times three, it's not a prime. Uh, we'll see what happens when you do six and it, it doesn't work. So I'm making another multiplication table. What are remainders when you divide by six? Um, you do have zero, which I'm kind of ignoring. One and two and three and four and five. Let's put those in. Two and three and four and five. Let's see what happens with this. So multiplication table, uh, one times one is one, one times two is two, one times two is three, four and five, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six. Uh, six has zero left over, a remainder of zero. So that's a zero. Now we have two times four is eight, uh, which has two left over. And two times five is 10. It has four left over when you divide by six. Uh, I'll fill this in, finish, uh, finish it off. A five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. Okay, so this is my multiplication now. What's different here is I get zeros in here. I get perfect multiples, which never happened with the primes. I get these zeros, nothing's left over. So if I do this same trick here, uh, at some point I'm gonna pair something up, like two times three. I'm gonna get a pair, like two times three, which is going to equal zero, I'm going to get a zero in here and this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. So if I do two times three, I've got a zero in my table. So if I did that in this same expression, this two would pair with three, it would give me zero and the whole thing automatically is zero. So I can now say, if it's composite, p minus one factorial uh, uh, has a remainder of zero. So you've got p minus one factorial, because if we pair up, we get a zero, the whole thing is zero. If we were looking at p minus one factorial plus one, it would give you a remainder of one. But that's still, that, could, yeah, that could still be a test for composites. We've got a test for primes, and that's a test for composites. We've got an equal statement, uh, equally valid statement for composite numbers as we do for primes as well. There's only one exception, I uh, think, yeah, four is a special case. Because um, it's so small, it's a, it's a special case.